What's up, guys? Alex here, AJNashville.com, here with some friends today. I've got Luis in the house. What's up, guys? And What's then going? we also have a special guest, Mr. Steve Price. Hello, hello. How's it going, Steve? Doing great. Hey, Good. thanks for the water, by the way, but... Yeah. You got the con candy bang going on over here. You didn't give me any. I know. I well, know. All, all I like to do is bang, 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 so... <laughs> But I, if I would have known you wanted a bang, we could have stole one out of Luis's fridge. He would yeah, have had no idea. Yeah, you got a bang. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me about the bang. So I got in a bang back when I was in shape still. Yeah. You know, we we back way, way long ago. Um, and I was at a – I was at, actually at the, the Arnold show out in Ohio. And they were passing it out, and I tried it. And it was realistically the only thing that actually gave me that boost or that spike of energy yeah. that I always desired. It's like – Four cups of coffee in a drink. And now that I've gotten older and I've drank it longer, it, it no longer has the same effectiveness. So I've went from one bang a day to sometimes two, sometimes three. It just depends. The so. bad thing is that one of those is two servings. Yes. Yeah. But I I do. I stop at, at a coffee shop every morning and get five shots of espresso on ice to start the day. That's like kickstarting. The only reason why I didn't today is there was a line wrapped around the building. I'm like, I'm not sitting in that line. So I just come in and steal his bangs. He almost comes in every morning running around the office. Well, yeah. Like, I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> Hold on a second. I mean, a cotton candy beverage, that's that's something. It's tutti frutti. Um, <laughs> to, it's actually one of the better tasting ones, but yeah, it's, it's definitely... They're all good until they warm up. Yeah. Well, it, it's not a manly thing. I would never walk into a bar and be like, hey, guys... You got any bang? Cotton <laughs> cotton candy bang? You got any cotton candy vodka? <laughs> Here's the door, sir. Thank right, you. exactly. You got something that tastes like cotton candy. I bet you do. Yeah. So so we got Steve here today. Steve, is he's got a new podcast going. Steve, what's the name of your podcast? It's called Prices Highway. Prices Highway. So those of you that may not know Steve, Steve is actually a local guy. He's in a lot of the Facebook groups. He he just likes to have fun. You know, he goes out there. He makes fun of himself. He's you you called it earlier the the human pinata, so to speak. Oh yeah, I'll be your right. pinata. Right, exactly. So, um, but he started this new podcast. I've got a chance to listen to some of it this morning. I think it's great. I think it's off to a great start. But this isn't something that you are. Uh, that you've done regularly, but you are a producer by trade, correct? I am, yeah. I started in a, actually in Houston as a, a sports photographer. Nice. Um, so uh, worked at a station, home to the Astros. Yeah. So that was a lot of fun. So I got my uh, got my start doing a sports photography and worked my way. Now I really wanted to go to um, to news while I was in I was in Houston, but mm -hmm. I was twenty. Yeah. They're not gonna let some twenty year old. Yeah, do new. So, so I went to a workshop, a media workshop, a long time ago, and they're like, "Hey, well, you know, what you want to do is go to the smallest market you can find, make your mistakes. They'll accept you, right? And your mistakes will not cost you so much." Yeah. And so that's why I did. I went to Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Uh huh. So, so I went from market eleven to like a thousand. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, I learned so much. Yeah. I was able to be a one man band reporter. I did a, you know, I ran tapes. I did everything. Right. And. You know, it's six bucks an hour. Yeah, that sounds pretty terrible, but not man. back then. It wasn't. <laughs> well, no, but man, <laughs> what I learned. Yes. I mean, I'm 42 now, and you know, it, it was it's just invaluable. Yeah. Well, you can't put a dollar amount behind the knowledge that you picked up, and picking those up in smaller markets, like you said, and, and like I'm sure the the producers in Houston said, it's going to cost you less because you haven't done it on such a large scale that hundreds of thousands of people have seen it, and they're now critiquing you. Yeah, yeah. So from Hattiesburg, where off, how did you get to Nashville? Okay, well then I, the station I worked for in Hattiesburg folded. <laughs> I'm sure I had something to do with it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the news director went to Columbus, Georgia. Uh huh. And I was looking for you know a gig because that place folded. So he's like, hey, you know, I know uh, the whole reporting thing. You weren't really into that, but we do have a photographer position open if you're right. interested in coming out and interviewing or whatever. I had to look up where Columbus, Georgia was on the map. I had no <laughs> idea where it was. Uh, and, and so I'm like, yeah, well, you know, why not? So I went out, interviewed, got the gig, um, stayed there for, you know, kind of went up the chain a little bit, became chief photographer there. Mm -hmm. And then I really wanted to get into promotion side of it. Right. You know? And a position came open, and they were willing to just run with it. And like, yeah, this guy, th this goofy guy over here can probably promote. Why not? <laughs> and so... I was able to do that, did some, uh, you know, station IDs and, you know, campaigns and all that. And mm -hmm. man, I loved it. Yeah. I met my wife there, Carrie Price. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, she was working at the radio station, and she was also a lead singer of a, of the big band there. That's you know, awesome. So they, they were, I knew what my Friday nights were. You yeah. Know, just, you know, um, being a roadie for her. Right. And, uh, but, you know, she's a singer, songwriter, and of course, Nashville, you know, that's the place to be. Yep. And uh, we were up here. We just visited for the first time, and I think it was when uh, Bredesen was being inaugurated. Mm-hmm. We were at the Sheraton, and I was looking down, and I was really into news back then. And she's like, hey, you know, I'm not feeling very well, but if you want to go down and, you know, just go see what's going on, talk to some people. And I, I see your eyes looking at the uh, satellite trucks and everything. Like, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, and so I did, and I bumped into uh, a Channel 4 crew. And uh, the photographer, the, I didn't know at the time, he was the chief photographer. He was taking uh-huh. a picture of the, uh, the hosts. And I'm like, hey, you want a picture of all three of you? And that's, that was kind of my end. Right. And, and so I just started talking to him about the market. And, uh-huh. you know, he's like, well, yeah, I'd like to you know, see some of your work. And, um, you know, about, I think it was about three months later, we were up here. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, you're like, see some of my work. I'll take a bunch of pictures with this camera. You take it. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> you can even take credit for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we, we've been here for uh, 15 years. We, uh, we first moved. We were in an apartment in Franklin, but we, we quickly moved to Spring Hill. Yeah. Bought a house there in 2000, January 2005. Nice. Oh. So Now, did you use your wife to buy that house? I want to well, make note. Well, he was her roadie. No. Right. She, well, know. she wasn't a realtor back then. Okay. I just wanted to make note the the fact that your wife is a realtor because we do have so many loan officers and realtors that do listen to this show that I want to at least give your wife that credit for being a, a successful realtor in Spring Hill, Tennessee. Well, thank you very much. Yes, Can sir. I take it one step further? Absolutely. Uh, don't think twice. Call Carrie Price. There 615 can you tell he's done promotion before? <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. So, but now, she did go on and sell all of our other houses, and yeah. so we're uh, we're in Thompson Station now. Might as well keep awesome. the money in the house. Yeah, Thompson Station is a good little city. So now you find yourself. You're here. You're doing some production stuff. Um, you actually you spearhead a a show, and yes. it's funny the story behind it. You were at Snappy Tomato. Oh man, why don't we have Snappy <laughs> Tomato in here? Where did it go? I, I have no idea. It wasn't here when I got here. Oh, that's so good. Oh. But yeah, uh, anyway, my father-in-law, he is a uh, world-renowned uh, furniture maker, chair maker, mm-hmm. and we were doing DVDs together, Yeah, uh, you know, how to build this, how to build that, and they were doing very well, and um, he came up here, Ava, my daughter was born, uh, it was recently after she was born, and we went to Snappy Tomato to pick up pizza for the family, Right. and I'm, I just asked him, hey, so we got this going on, so what's next, mm-hmm. what's missing, mm-hmm. and... I thought, well, hey, you know, when people put out their own magazine, that makes them look more professional. Right. But I had actually, uh, you know, I can do magazine shows. That's yeah. what I did for Channel 4. I did uh, Nashville Music and More, Better Nashville and More Midday. Wow. So I had that kind of, you know, background. And he's all, yeah, but what would that look like? Right. And so I grabbed a napkin, <laughs> and I pretty much did the entire rundown of the show. So it's pretty much... Uh, I don't know if you watch CBS uh, morning show, uh, Sunday morning show. Mm-mm. It's uh, it's kind of just a magazine style, you know, biographies and everything. Right. But we focus it on woodworkers. Right. And we go all over the country, and we um, it's a www.thehighlandwoodworker.com. And uh, yeah, we talk to the masters of wood, and they uh, they invite us in. We 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 see their shop. We uh, get some inspiration from them, and they teach us some techniques. Nice. Speaking of cool furniture, yeah. By the way. <laughs> This podcast, this podcast room, yeah. pretty envious. Thank you. Quite Thank frankly. You. But this table is really cool. So the question is, would your father-in-law be impressed by this table? I think so. Uh, that's good. So this table was actually built by local company, built by design. Guys, if you want a, an incredible looking table, you have to check it out. I'm, I'm sure you've seen the pictures online, but it's made by Built by Design. Local guy, Jason Froman and his wife, Lauren Froman, actually own the company, and if you see their trailer, their trailer got stolen not too long ago, so if you see it driving around, give us a call. No, no. <laughs> yeah, so I know it's not a laughing matter, but if, you know, if you see it out there, let us know about it, but yeah. So now we, we've we've started this show, we've got it on a, a napkin. All great things start by napkins, by the way. Yes. Every every great story, you know, you watch a movie, they're like, how did it start? Well, I wrote it down on a napkin. You're like, all right. <laughs> Snappy tomato napkin. <laughs> right. I wish I still had it. That'd be awesome. Frame yeah. it, put it up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We just got greenlit for our uh, 2020 season. We've been. It'll be our eighth season. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. So, and that's a a trade that you know 
you don't see it as much as you used to. You know, when I was young, you had woodshop class and everybody wanted to go to it. You know, it was a, a great thing to do. And I think that's kind of fizzled out in school. So the fact that that's still out there and available for people to watch, I think is huge. So now you've stepped up and you've, you're, you've started your own podcast. Tell me about some of the growing pains. I mean, just getting started or thinking of doing one is a growing pain in itself. Yeah, I have no idea what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> Quite frankly, it's just a space that I've always been interested in. Yeah. Uh, you know, podcasts are huge now. Right. Uh, it's a it's a trendy thing to have a podcast, mm-hmm. and I'm usually not one to go with trends. Right. But this is one I listen to podcasts all the time. Yeah. Uh, how you know stuff you should know and ninety nine percent invisible. But my favorite one is uh, twenty thousand hertz. Have you heard that? Uh huh. <sighs> they deep dive into sounds. Uh huh. Oh uh, yeah. I'll, I'll Dial have that to one check. Up. Yeah, I'll have yeah. to check that out. And if you're listening, check it out as well. So. <laughs> Now, and that comes probably from your production background and your interest in in the different things when it when it has. Because I asked you this, I said, "Do you do a lot of of production to your podcast?" And you're like, "Oh my god, I do a lot of it." That's all I do. Where where we just rip it and roll. Yeah, you know, it's we're kind of those those wild wild westers. We're like, he said it. Let's just put it out there. <laughs> <laughs> so starting a podcast, obviously, you have to do a couple of different things. One, you got to be encouraged to start it. So is there somebody out there that provided you with some inspiration to say, "Hey, you know what?" Put your voice over the radio waves. Uh, no, not really. Uh, mostly discouraged from people. You know? <laughs> I mean, who wants to hear this voice? Right. Really? Come on. Discouraged from people that are actually in it and do it, or someone that doesn't have. No Usually, idea the about discouraging it. people are the people that have never done it. Right. So that's. I'm assuming that's. Well, I'm being a little facetious. Actually, I put it out on one of the forums. I'm like, hey, if I did a podcast, would you listen? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're like. Well, we don't like you, but yeah, <laughs> I probably. Remember, I, I remember that post. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like, well, okay, well, why not? Yeah. So and in my first, I sent you the pilot. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's I don't have it up yet, um, so I'm going to – making a little tweaks to it. But I had Jim McCarthy. He, yeah. uh, he has the JMVO Weekly Primer, yep. and he's a big podcaster here in Spring Hill. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, he kind of showed me the ropes a little bit, um, right. told me what kind of equipment to get. And uh, he was on the show and taught me how to make my podcast a little better. Yeah. yeah and so. you got some pretty high-end equipment, too. So you went with the <clears throat> Roadcaster Pro. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, they, they make some incredible pro- uh, products. I'm actually waiting on their Podcaster mic. to. I think it's called the Pod. No, it's not the Podcaster. It's a Pod mic. Yeah, yeah. I just got mine. It was on back order. Yeah. And, and you know, quite frankly, I like the SM58. Yeah. Well, yeah. see, and, and that's the thing is these live mics are really good yeah. for what we use them for. But... You know, supposedly that mic was going to be the the competition to the SM7B, which is what I use. Mm. Uh, I'm curious to see if it it ranks up there with it or not. But you know, the the big thing is when you talk about podcasts, it's also the sound around it. You know, the room that you're in. I've listened to some podcasts where it sounds like they're in a bathroom. I've listened to some where they are in a bathroom. Um, but the environment around it, you know, they say a lot of that takes place within the six six inches away from the microphone, but. Luis will tell you, echo in this room drives me up a wall, like bad. I want to sit as still as possible. Yeah, don't move, <laughs> don't touch anything. You know, we got these chairs that I got on uh, Facebook Marketplace, and they squeak and they make noise. We got a guy that broke that chair. Yeah, <laughs> they're noisy chairs. <laughs> so, so what about a hosting site? What site are you going to host your your podcast from, and what made you choose that site? i you know, I haven't chosen that yet. Okay, um, I. Probably Podbean. Mm-hmm. I heard a lot of good things about that. It's yeah. not pricey, but it gets you on the main the main guys. Right. Uh, again, I'm just really in the uh, the early process of this. Mm-hmm. Um, wanted to get a pilot out and send it to you and several other people just to get some feedback. And I have right. got feedback. Yeah. Uh, the feedback is, hey, where'd you go? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they want they want uh, some observations and I guess me being funny or something you being steve price that's what that's why everybody on that page said they would listen because that's what they listen to you know that's why i tune into that that page is to find people like yourself and see what they have to say you know so i think that's a big thing when it comes into doing your podcast you can't lose sight of you know people are tuning in to listen to me or listen to what i have to say or my my thought process uh, and I think that's going to be valuable for yours. I think people want to hear, well, what's Steve think about this? So maybe you need just, uh, we talked about it before, a little Jerry Springer at the end. The final thoughts. <laughs> yeah, the final <laughs> thoughts. Here with Jerry and the final thoughts. Maybe you can even do the video version of that. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, I can bring a Craig Midget in. There you go. <laughs> and now we've got a midget. Right, exactly. <laughs> that's awesome. 
So the future of it, because you talked about this with the woodworking show, Mm -hmm. and I know you're in the infant steps of it. So the future of it is not something that you necessarily have nailed down. But is this going to be a weekly show? Is it going to come out every Friday, every Tuesday? What's what's the plan? My goal is for it to be every week. Okay. Uh, The day, I don't know. Um, It might be on a third. I don't I don't. I don't know if I'm going to do like a certain day. Mm-hmm. Uh, now I have teamed up with the Advertiser News of Spring Hill and Thomas Station. Oh, Chris so, Yao. And Chris Yao. Yeah. Yeah, he's doing the uh, news updates. Yeah, that's awesome. And so I want to correlate that with him, so he has time to do his thing, send it to me, and uh, you know get something out there. But uh, most of the stuff I do is really going to be evergreen. Right. Uh, the whole idea of the show is hyper local. Right. And uh, the people, places, and things of Spring Hill. What's mm-hmm. going on? And let's meet the people who are doing them. Right, right. The snappy tomatoes. Yes. Which, <laughs> come back. Right, come back. I know you have a fan here, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think that's a great uh, great idea to partner up with those, especially with Chris. Chris is very knowledgeable. Obviously, he has to be based on what he does. But uh, Yeah, you know, he's a one-man band. He is. And, and I didn't realize that. So I we got in conversation at one point, and he's like, this is what I do. And I'm the only one that does it. I'm like, Really? The only person that runs that whole thing, that's a lot to do. So yeah. that's a full-time job in itself. And obviously introducing him into the podcast as well is going to add to the workload. So you want to make sure that it's it's kind of consistent. So um, you haven't decided where you're going to put it. So I do mine on Libsyn. Now, I started with several different platforms initially. I started with Blog Talk Radio. Then I went to Buzzsprout. Then I went with Libsyn, YouTube. You know, I've, I've put it everywhere. This thing is like a pig with lipstick. But uh, I have found for myself that Libsyn's very... Um, it allows me to port everything to where it has to go when I'm only putting it into one platform. I just canceled Blog Talk Radio simply because it wasn't as user-friendly. Buzzsprout, I keep around because moving my podcast from Buzzsprout to Libsyn, utilizing iTunes is, to me, like a technical nightmare. And so I'm just going to pay for both in the meantime. Sure. Um, You know, and and I use editing software, so I use uh, GarageBand. Is there a software that you use that you find helpful? Yeah, I'm actually using Premiere. Okay, and Uh, is that? It's my video background. I can do everything I need to do in the audio field as well. A lot of people want to use Audition when they're Mm -hmm. using Adobe, Mm -hmm. and that's cool. Do it uh, if you figure it out. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) That's not Audio is not my thing. Again, this is a new space for me, and... Um, yeah, so uh, Premiere Pro is what I use. Okay. Yeah, and, and that's um, uh, not Mac. That's PC-based, right? It's PC and Mac. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it's a, a subscription you can get from Adobe. Uh-huh. And I think I pay something like 55 bucks a month, that's and you'll have bad. access to every single mm-hmm. Adobe uh, software out there. And right. they constantly update it. Yeah. So you have the newest, the latest and greatest right. at your fingertips at all times. Right. And and see, when I, when I started my podcast, see... I made a lot of mistakes. You'll see there's equipment laying around. I don't, I don't know if that's still over there or not, but there's equipment laying around. There's some sitting in my office of different things. Not that equipment. That's workout equipment. That doesn't get used. Are you going to row something? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I always row before I podcast. <laughs> I no. do too. Uh, that's something we both have in common. Right. We both row before podcast. It, it, it gets you hyped up, and yeah. then you jump on, and you're like, ugh. <laughs> but, but I have a lot of equipment laying around. I have old arms. I have old uh, processing equipment, stuff that when I jumped into podcasting, I didn't have a direction. And so if I could make a recommendation to anybody that's going to do a podcast, and you're fortunate because you had a really good mentor when you were starting out as far as being able to direct you and the right equipment to use, but figure out what it is you want to do and what your end game is. That doesn't mean that you go out and buy the biggest, baddest piece of equipment, but I bought several small pieces of equipment that didn't suffice for, I mean, I used them for like two, three weeks, and then they were they were obsolete. I couldn't use them anymore simply because my podcast started to grow. So one of them I used to focus right. Uh, and I was able to use a microphone input, but then I bought it because I wanted to make calls. And yeah. I could plug in the phone into the backside of it and make calls, but that's the only thing I could do with it. And so then I had to buy something that took two mics. Now you see I have this that takes six mics, plus I, I don't even know how many inputs I can put into this thing, probably a lot. Um, so if I can give anybody advice, it would be to map out the equipment that you want to use. Research the hosting platforms that you're going to want to use when it comes down to where you're going to put it. What's the reach? I listen to a lot of different podcasts that are extremely successful and kind of in the sphere that I want to be in. And I listen to what they used. And because Jocko Willink and Joe Rogan and those guys use Libsyn, I'm like, well, if they use it, why can't yeah, I? Yeah, it works for them. Yeah. And, and my first thought was this is going to be outrageously priced. But I think I pay 20 bucks a month for hosting. It's not bad. It allows me five hours or something of upload time and oh, unlimited space. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's pretty cheap. So uh, that would be my recommendation on that. On equipment, 
you know, these these live mics, I mean, these are so these are the AKGs, which are basically the SM55s. I think they are. They're they're the same yeah. style of microphone. Yeah. Um, but they work really well. You know, they're they they're cheap. You can buy two of them for like 50 bucks or something like that off eBay. If you buy it on Amazon, it's one for 50 bucks. But they work. You know, they sound, I think, with with a little bit of tweaking on the digital program, they sound just as good as the SM7B. Maybe. Yeah. In fact, uh Yesterday, when I was doing some voicing for mm-hmm. my podcast, mm-hmm. uh, you didn't hear the big fans going on in my house because we <laughs> we had a water leak. Right. And we have fans all over the place. Yeah. And uh, just closed the door. Everything was going on downstairs, but it was loud as all get out. Right. Closed the door, used the SM58, and did you hear anything in the macro? I didn't. No. no it, I was actually pretty envious of how great the quality sounded. And I didn't know if that was directly related to the Roadcaster Pro that you use. I've been interested in that piece of equipment. It's so awesome. And if I could get money from Roadcaster Pro right now, yeah. if they can send me like some money for talking nice about them, right. I would get this piece or, of equipment. Yeah. You know, if you're starting out because I can't remember how much it's like five hundred, six hundred dollars mm-hmm. and it's You know, that's a lot of money. It is. But if you're going to be serious about doing a weekly or monthly or whatever podcast. Right. I always say get the best tool. Yes. And this is not like, you know, $30,000. Right. And what it gives you is, you know, a lot of flexibility. You Mm -hmm. have... uh, what do you call it? Eight hot pads or whatever. You, right. can, you can program those. You can With put sound commercials in them. Yeah, yeah, sound effects, whatever. Mm-hmm. But the cool thing is you can also uh, do the, it has a Bluetooth capability where right. you can sync it with your phone. You can take in phone calls. You can have uh, guests don't have to come to you. Yeah. If you, you know, it's like, well, I'm at home right now, but I can't get to Tom's station. Right. Well, let's just talk now. Yep. No big deal. And I did a test and the audio sounds awesome. Well, not only that, but it also has the inputs for your headphones. It does. So you don't have to buy separate ones. Like I have a separate input that's mounted underneath the table that all these headphones go into. And then I've got to buy cables to carry them all there. And then the cable to carry it back to the uh, soundboard. Now, the Podcaster Pro also has a built-in processor, correct? Uh, it, it's a, it starts with an A. It's some type of processor. I've researched them a little bit. Okay. Uh, but I, that I'm... helps digitize the what you're putting into the microphone. It takes it and it actually improves the quality of it. Um, I've researched them. I think yeah. they're awesome. And the only thing that's got me held back on buying one is I'm waiting for them to go on sale. <laughs> yeah, and they will, I'm sure. Yeah. So, I mean, when I bought mine, I mean, I called a guitar center. Nobody had them. There are all yeah. these things. Once we get them, they're out. So... I just called another company, and mm-hmm. they just mailed it to me. Yep. And, yeah, totally worth it. And yeah. I hope they um, they reimburse me for that. They should send you a yeah. check for that. I think this would be, yeah, uh, they need to send you a check. So we should put that in the, the description. Yeah, the show notes? Yeah, exactly. Hey, yeah. we need a check for this. Mail it to 123 Main Street, Steve Price. Yeah. You can find them on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge. Interesting story. I mean, here's a man that's went from from small town, you know, Hattiesburg, or well, before that you were in Houston. But interesting story as you kind of develop and grow through the phases of media. Now you're you're doing your own show. Once again, share that website with us. The website where you can find the woodworking show. It's called uh, the Highland Woodworker. It's at thehighlandwoodworker.com. Awesome, awesome. And then the podcast. As we get more information on that, is it once we find out where it's going to be hosted, where it can be found. My assumption is you're going to have it on all the common places, the Spotify's, iTunes. That's the idea. Okay. Yeah. I'm also right. going to uh, put it on Prices Highway Facebook group. Awesome. So if you, you're Send on me an Facebook, <laughs> uh, join me there, yeah. and I'll probably put it on if they let me on uh, Spring Hill Lighthearted as well. I'm sure they will. You're kind of an icon on there. And that's what the that. listener. well, the <laughs> listeners that are, that are not from Spring Hill, Tennessee, they're like, who's this Steve Price guy? The people that are going to hear this that are from here are probably like, who Ryan and <laughs> eat popcorn and guzzling beers? <laughs> well, that's what usually happens when I show up to a party. Right. Everyone starts guzzling yeah. beers and, and eating popcorn. And then they popcorn. say the, uh, the pinata walk in, and, you know, that's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Everyone take a swing. Yeah. So, but I, I do want to. I want to thank you for showing up today. I want to thank the listeners that have tuned in. Also, by the way, because I haven't had a chance to thank one of our other sponsors. If you're looking to buy or sell a home, not only check out Carrie Price, Steve's wife, but also check out Broker Title and Escrow for incredible service when it comes to your titling needs. I don't have Greg's phone number with me, but you can reach out to him at Greg at BrokerTitleAndEscrow.com. They are located in Nashville, Tennessee, but they'll close wherever you want to. So thanks again for tuning in. We'll talk to you soon.